Hello and welcome to another video. This one is another performance video. Uh, it's a bit of a strange one. This was pointed out on my Discord by uh, CMYUY. And I got interested. I, I got a little nerd snipe. So I'm going to show you what I found as well as how I can make this faster. Okay, so we're dealing with um, two date time functions today. One of them is date.today, which just returns a date. A date just has your month day. It does not have time associated with it. And if we run this, we'll see that date.today takes about 1.4 microseconds per loop. Uh, and if we look at datetime.now.date, which also computes a date, but it goes through a date time as an intermediate, you would think this one would be slower. But... <laughs> Uh, now that date is almost twice as fast as date.today. So there must be something weird going on here is what I figured. And so I figured I'd dive into the implementation of both the functions and figure out why, uh, why they work that way. <clears throat> so to look at that, um, I mean, unfortunately date time is implemented in C. So we have to jump into C Python and look at the actual C source. And that lives in modules, date time module dot C. And the two functions that we're looking for are date today, uh, which is this function here. Now you'll note when you look at this, there's actually a comment that kind of gives it away as to why this is slow. Uh, but I didn't realize just quite how much slower it was than, than the other function. Uh, and you'll note here that say they say today is a class method, so it may not call uh, date dot from timestamp. Um, and that's, that's how it's actually implemented under the hood. Um, but it turns out the date today implementation always calls this method. And because it always calls this method, it has to go through method lookup, which can be kind of slow. It, well, it's going to be much slower than just computing the result directly and returning it directly. Um, whereas if we look at date time now, uh, you'll see that date time now just goes through direct construction. It doesn't do, it doesn't do any method calls in here. Uh, of course, you'd have to look at uh, date time best possible as well. Um, but you'll just have to trust me that it doesn't go through. Yeah, there's no there's no method calls here. It's essentially just, you know, converting time T, or converting a system clock into time T and then a time T into a date time object. And of course, we also want to look at date time uh, date, which is actually implemented as date time get date. A little bit, <laughs> not, not quite what I would have expected. Um, but if you go down here and you see new date, uh, it's just retrieving the year, month, and day off of the date time object. So not, not really doing anything special there. Um, but I thought, well, why not try and optimize this case? Why not make it faster? Uh, there are actually other cases in the date time module which go through a fast path uh, by doing something like this. So checking whether the class is equal to exactly the date type. So it's not a subclass, so it doesn't have to do method lookup. It can just compute it directly. Uh, there's also other stuff which checks the date time type, uh, which I didn't learn. I didn't. I didn't realize until today the date time type actually uh, is a subclass of the date type, which seems a little bit weird, but it, it kind of makes sense. Um, so I came up with this patch, get fly patch. And if we look at this patch here, you'll see that I have added a fast path similar to that code there, uh, where I am just calling the C level time and local time functions to directly compute the date and then construct the date directly. So no, no method call, no, you know, identifier, lookup, none of that stuff. We're just doing this directly. And if we build that, make j dash j5. Um, I've already pre-built the rest of it, so we don't have to sit through the full build. Uh, after we've built that, we can run time it using that locally built Python. And you'll see, I mean, we haven't changed the well, <laughs> this is a little bit slower because it doesn't go through PGO, but uh, we haven't really changed the performance of now.date. But if we look at uh, today, we should have made it much faster. And you'll notice that we've we've made it faster than now.date, which is what I expect. This is this is kind of the timing that I would expect for these two functions. I would expect today to be much faster. But anyway. Um, Hopefully you found that interesting. I did make a bug report from this. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, here we go. So maybe this will get fixed in Python itself. Um, 
but basically put the same findings that I have in this video in there. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms, and I'll see you in the next one.